Hello, 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 and welcome back. So once again, a very warm welcome to all of you. As always, keep on saying I hope and I wish that all of you are doing fit and fine. So today in this session, we are going to discuss another quick unit, another very short unit that's electromagnetic waves. One question is fixed from this unit. So let's get started. <coughs> and let's begin with the discussion of electromagnetic waves. So beginning with the concepts of displacement current and the properties of electromagnetic waves the first question from need 2021 a latest pyq is coming in front of you so have a look at the question what the question says the question says that a capacitor c is connected across an ac source of voltage v given by the expression given by the expression v equals to v naught sin of omega t this is the expression being given to you. What is the expression being given to you? V equals to V naught sine of omega t. Okay, that's cool. The displacement current between the plates of the capacitor would then be given by. You need to find out the expression for the displacement current. So what is the expression for displacement current? You know that for a capacitor, if this is a parallel plate capacitor, okay connected to an AC source, okay, so you know <coughs> that what happens in this situation, you say that at any instant the charge that's being accumulated on the plates is Q equals to CV, okay, that's fine, and at any given instant of time, you can say that instantaneous charge is nothing but C times of V naught sine of omega t, what we have done, we have substituted the expression for v from here to there we have substituted the value of v from this expression to there now what is current we know that the current is what current is dq by dt i equals to dq by dt so what is dq by dt it's d by dt d by dt of q now c and v naught comes out from the expression this is sine of omega t. This is sine of omega t. Okay. So differentiate this expression. Differentiate this expression. What do you get? You get I equals to C V naught into omega sine of sorry. Differentiation of sine is cos of omega t. This is the expression for the displacement current. Okay. So what expression it matches? It matches the option number A. What it matches? It matches the option A. So this is the answer. This is the answer in front of you. Have a look at this. Is this point very clear? Is this point absolutely clear? <coughs> okay, so here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There's another question coming in front of you. Have a look at the question. Read the question. What this question says. For a plane electromagnetic wave propagating in the plus x direction. For a plane electromagnetic wave propagating in the plus x direction. Which one of the following combination gives the correct possible direction for electric field and magnetic field? What it says? It says that amongst them, which can match the expression for E and B? Which amongst these sets can match the expression for E and B? Are we aware about the fact that for a electromagnetic wave, for an electromagnetic wave, okay, for an electromagnetic wave, the electric and magnetic field vectors oscillate in mutually perpendicular directions the electric and magnetic field vectors oscillate in mutually perpendicular directions okay electric and magnetic field vectors oscillate in mutually perpendicular directions okay something like this like this <clears throat> okay so let's say if this is x this is y and this is z axis okay 
So you can say that E and B are going to be in mutually perpendicular directions. So E dot B is going to be equal to zero. Now amongst these options, which is going to give you the dot product as zero? Let's check option number A. It can never give zero because one, 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 this is two. So this might give zero. Let's cross check the option number B. Let's say if E is minus J plus K and B is minus J minus K. So what can you say? Is E dot B giving you zero? Is E dot B giving you zero? This is one. This is minus one. Yes, this is giving you zero. Yes, this is giving you zero. So the answer is B. So the answer is B. E dot B is zero according to the expression number B. That's fine. That's fine. Very nice. Cool. Okay. Note this down quickly. I'm getting aside both the questions. Done. <clears throat> okay, let's take the discussion ahead. There's another question coming in front of you. What the question says, the magnetic field in a plane electromagnetic wave is given by the expression B equals to B naught sine of sine of Kx plus omega t sine of kx plus omega t now what is the coefficient of k sorry what is the coefficient of x this is the coefficient of x okay this is the coefficient of x what is the coefficient of x it's k so k is how much k is pi into 10 to the power 3 and what is the expression for k it's 2 pi by lambda so what do we get what do we get? We get lambda equals to pi gets cancelled out. This is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter turns out to be the answer. This is the wavelength in front of you. Okay. At this point, absolutely clear. Note it down quickly. Done with this. Let's take the discussion ahead. The next question coming in front of you is this. Read the question. The ratio. The ratio of continuous. No, sorry. Contributions made by the electric and magnetic field components to the intensity of electromagnetic wave is. They are asking that what's the ratio of the contribution made by the electric field and the magnetic field component. Okay. So electric field and magnetic field component e by b equals to c this is the expression e equals to bc isn't it so that's what they are asking the ratio of contributions made by electric and magnetic field component so this is electric field component this is magnetic field component so how much it turns out to be it turns out to be c so the answer is going to be c ratio 1 because we know the expression that relates the peaks of the two E naught equals to B naught into C. It's the expression. Okay, so here we go. The next question in front of you is this. Have a look at the question, what the question says. Light with an average flux of 20 watt per centimeter square. Okay, so what is this given? This is intensity being given to you. What is this being given to you? This is intensity being given to you. Okay, so what's intensity? That's power per unit area. That means energy per unit area per unit time. That's 20 watt per centimeter square. Okay. Falls on a non-reflecting surface at normal incidence having surface area of 20 centimeter square. How much is the area? Area is 20 centimeter square. Energy received by the surface during a span of one minute okay now what is this flux this is energy per unit area per unit time 
if you need to find out energy you need to multiply the time that's one minute that's 60 seconds isn't it and this is the energy falling per unit area so you need to multiply the area also that's 20 centimeter square you need not to worry because both are in centimeter square it gets cancelled out so this is going to give you the expression for total energy what we have done this power per unit area is nothing but energy per unit area per unit time this is 20 so we have multiplied 60 seconds and 20 centimeter square into this expression so what do we get we get 20 into 60 into 20 this is going to give you the answer in joules so this is 12 to the 24 1 2 3 okay 23 24 kilojoules that means 24 into 10 to the power 3 joules okay what is the concept basically see uh, if this is a surface okay and some light is falling on the surface somewhat like this some light is falling that means photons are falling light is falling means some photons are falling okay light is falling means some photons are falling okay so how much energy is falling per unit area per unit time how much energy is falling per unit area per unit time this is what we call as the intensity or the energy flux okay what's going to be the unit energy falling per unit time is nothing but power this is nothing but power so the expression is for power per unit area okay that means watt per meter square or watt per centimeter square note it down this is an important concept this concept is important please note it down let me know if you are done with this quickly okay let's take the discussion ahead There's another question. Read the question what it says. This is from NEED 2019. A parallel plate capacitor of capacitance 20 microfarad is being charged by a voltage source whose potential is changing at a rate of 3 volt per second. The conduction current The conduction current through the connecting wires and the displacement current through the plates of the capacitor. What are they asking? They are simply saying, they are simply saying that capacitance has been given to you and the potential has been is being changing at a rate of 3 volt per second. Okay. So basically what has been given to you? TV by DT has been given to you. TV by DT has been given to you. You know that at any instant you write this expression. So I is going to be what? I is going to be what? T is constant. Isn't it? How much it's going to be? 60 microampere. 60 microampere. Okay, 60 microampere. So this is the value of what current? What current is it providing you? You're talking about the current that between the plates of the capacitor. So you know that displacement current exists where? The displacement current exists over here between the plates of the capacitor ID. And the conduction current exists in the wire. Conduction current exists in the wire. Okay, this is ID. Somewhat like this and this is IC. Okay. So, 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 yeah, we know that ID 
equals IC. This is the expression. Okay, note it down. Note it down quickly. This is the answer in front of you. Quick. Then with this, all of you. Need 2018. What the question says? An EM wave is propagating. An EM wave is propagating in a medium with a velocity V i cap. The instantaneous oscillating electric field of this EM wave along y axis, then the direction of oscillating magnetic field. The direction of oscillating magnetic field. What, what this question says? This question says that the wave is being propagating along the x axis. See, wave is propagating along x axis. That means energy is along x axis. Okay. And the electric field vectors are along the y axis. This is energy. That means wave along the x-axis, okay, and electric field is along the y-axis, and this is the z-axis, so the magnetic field has to be along the z-axis, okay, okay, one more thing, tell me one thing, that what is the expression, how do we uh, figure out the direction, how do we figure out the direction, we say that E cross B gives you V. Now V has been given to you as I cap. And uh, electric field has been given to you as J cap. So that means Y. So what is I? J cross K or minus K? J cross K is I. I, J, K. Okay. I cross J, K, J cross K, I. I cross J, K, J cross K, I. Okay. So, J cross K is I. Done. All of you done with this? Note it down quickly. Do this first. Let's take the discussion ahead. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Read the question. What this question says, out of the following options, which one, which one can be used to produce a propagating electromagnetic wave? Now, what this question says, this says that, this question says that, what kind of charged particle is required for producing electromagnetic wave? So, I gave you the discussion based upon the properties of charge. We know that when a charge is at rest, we know that when a charge is at rest, it generates, it generates electric field only. We know that when a charge is moving with a constant velocity, okay, along with the electric field, it also generates the magnetic field. And when a charge is accelerated, okay, that means if the charge is oscillating, electro magnetic radiations okay em waves it produces it produces what it produces em waves so that's what they are asking that which one of the following options can be used to produce a propagating electromagnetic wave an accelerating charge okay what's the answer it's T. 
note it down quick okay so here we go next question coming in front of you is this from AIPMT 2015 read the question what this question says radiation of energy E falls normally on a perfectly reflecting surface the momentum transferred to the surface now remember the case for the momentum transferred okay remember the condition for the momentum transferred there are two cases case number one case number one is when the surface is perfectly absorbing and when the surface is perfectly reflecting so if the surface is perfectly absorbing let's say this is a surface and these are the photons which are coming these are the photons which are coming okay photons 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 are coming and the surface absorbs the photon and in in the another case what happens the photons are coming and the surface reflects the photons photons are coming okay and what happens the light is coming and after coming the light gets reflected back that means the photons are being reflected photons are coming like this they come they strike and they go okay so in the reflecting situation see the momentum transferred is e divided by c and in this case the momentum transferred is two times of e by c so the answer is going to be b remember this discussion okay the momentum transferred in case of absorbing surface and the momentum transferred in case of reflecting surface okay so now let's discuss the em spectrum the electromagnetic wave of shortest wavelength now remember shortest wavelength is nothing but the longest frequency so longest frequency corresponds to gamma rays longest frequency corresponds to gamma radiations em wave energy of em wave of the order 15 kilo electron volt to which part does it belong now for this you just need to remember the spectrum directly so you can suggest that it belongs to infrared okay oh, sorry it belongs to x-rays it belongs to x-rays just cross check it okay because i remember this is this belongs to 15 kilo electron volt belongs to x-rays next question <coughs> no concept in it you just need to remember the spectrum that's it condition under which a microwave often heats up food item containing water molecule most effectively what happens what's the concept of microwave this is the concept of a microwave if this is a microwave okay microwave oven and this is some food item kept inside the microwave okay so how it heats up this food item let's say these are the water molecules these are the water molecules present within the food items okay so what these radiations do the radiations generate a frequency okay the system generates a frequency which is equal to the uh, natural frequency of the water molecule so what happens the amplitude of vibration of these water molecules increases tremendously so what happens the amplitude of the vibration of these water molecules increases tremendously and water is left by the system so the answer is the frequency of microwave must match the resonant frequency of the water molecule A is the answer next question decreasing order of wavelength now they are asking about the decreasing order of wavelength so what is the decreasing 
order of wavelength that means increasing order of frequency so we know that the frequency for gamma is maximum and ultraviolet infra micro so this is the correct sequence okay for frequency frequency ultraviolet infrared okay infrared ultraviolet so this is the uh, correct sequence for the increasing order of frequency or the decreasing order of wavelength that's right at like this this is the order for decreasing frequency or the increasing wavelength next question the velocity of electromagnetic radiation in a medium of permittivity epsilon naught and permeability mu naught is given by so you know that c okay equals to 1 by root over epsilon naught mu naught now if epsilon naught and mu naught are the permittivity and permeability of the free space then this is the speed of the electromagnetic radiation in air only okay so the answer is this so this was about the electromagnetic waves all the questions all the pyqs we have completed so keep revising we'll be back tomorrow with another quick session another discussion after this we'll be starting with the revision and the most important concept series okay so let's meet in the next session until then take care thank you goodbye